Hi, hi everyone. Uh, welcome, thanks for coming and thanks for having me today. And uh, today I'm going to talk about diversity in open source from Asian perspective, based on some data and also the people interview inside and outside of Asia. Okay, so uh, agenda today. Firstly, I will talk about why diversity matters and the background of the subject. Then I will share uh, some of the data of open source participation and the brief history of open source growth in Asia. I will then uh, share some um, a list of potential barriers to participation with some insights and also ideas how to overcome them. Finally, I will close the talk with a summary of key points. Okay, so a uh, quick intro about me and my involvement with open source. I was born and grew up in Japan, studied engineering at uni, started as a Windows software developer. Spending much time in Tokyo and Seattle, back to back for four years. Then I had an opportunity to lead the mobile phone uh, protocol team in the UK, where I met my English husband and moved to the UK. I was leading the um, Linux-based Android tablet platform development, and this was my first experience of open source. Then I took a year out to look after my son, after which I changed my career from telecoms to cloud. Um, <coughs> excuse me, leading multiple technical programs from IT through to business transformation. Moving up to date for the last four years or so, I've been working as a staff open source program manager at VMware's open, so, uh, open source programs office, leading the uh, strategic alignment between the community contributions and the company's business strategies. Okay, so at first, let's look at why diversity matters. Many studies show a variety of perspectives and experiences create a richer and stronger community and produce more innovative solutions. In the most recent McKinsey Diversity Matters report, those companies committed to diversity show a 39% increased likelihood of outperformance for those in the quartile of ethnic representation versus those in the bottom quartile. Companies in the top quartile of ethnic diversity show a 27% financial advantage over others and those in the bottom quartile for both ethnic and gender diversity are 66% less likely to outperform financially. This indicates that lack of diversity is getting more expensive for organizations. So today, perhaps everyone agrees that open source presence is strong in North America and Europe. Asia is the most co uh, populated continent with a great potential to become a <coughs> driving force of open source. And the continent is extremely culturally diverse. Many organizations try to promote and recruit to increase their diversity. For open source communities, it is more complicated. Although many open source foundations run a number of great projects to improve their DI, DI status of uh, communities, it takes a very long time to improve the diversity due to its nature. In this talk, I'm going to identify factors that could impact the strong participation to open source in Asia. So when I first researched this topic two years previous, the number of open source developers in Asia was high and growing higher. But in the survey, we heard very few voices from them. And many open source communities said that they struggled to get strong participation from Asia, for example, in the leadership positions. The latest October 2023 report says that the de developer communities are growing bigger year over year. <coughs> And India and Japan are leading, leading the growth in Asia Pacific and India still has the fastest growing developer population. So we have the great opportunity to adjust the balance even further. So just for reference, although the developer population from Asia is mainly from India and China, the region consists of over 20 countries and many of them are positively engaged in open source supported by the government, the communities, and the organizations who recognize the importance of it. 
And for the generative AI projects, the half of top 10 global communities that are creating them are from Asian countries. Open source history in Asia started with Linux, strongly supported by national governments. By early 2000, uh, open source was not yet well recognized in most Asian countries. Japan was an uh, early adopter of Linux and open source, with lead by NEC, Hitachi, Fujitsu, and help from Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade, and the Industry. Many open source organizations were set up in Asian country, as shown. Central government funding triggered and accelerated the adoption and the increased awareness of open source in Asia. And many open source conferences are held every year across Asia. I've shown just a, a few on the slide and many of you must have already attended some of them and many others too. So now we know a firm foundation for open source exists. Next, let's look at the geographical and social factors that could impact strong participation in open source. I cannot talk for all of Asia, but I have identified some key reasons that could explain their limited participation today. In the last month, I have interviewed a number of Asian colleagues, ex-colleagues, and community members and leaders. In the next few slides, I will share my findings so that together we can think of how to overcome. The time differences and limitations are a significant factor in the participation with open source. In fact, this is common challenges to uh, this is common challenge to all regions. Async contribution is a common solution, but the research shows that more new members remain in the communities when they actively join the actual discussion rather than just, just committing, and committing code and creating the issues. From this perspective, for engineers in Asia, unfriendly meeting time could be a barrier to community participation. One of the steering committee members uh, commented that the lots of CNCF projects meeting time are too late for APAC regions. Sometimes I attended at midnight, and this could be a huge barrier for those who are just starting at the community. And there were times I missed the late meetings and then woke up to see decisions have been already made without my input. It is challenging to organize a community meeting at social times for everyone, but we must be mindful and make an effort to be flexible. Another time-related challenge is making the time available for open source. In fact, most developers across all regions listed insufficient time as a significant barrier to contributing to open source project. The situation changes if you're allowed to work on open source during working hours or not. Or if you can afford spending time for open source outside of your core hours. This is also affected by regional cultures and other social aspects. I will cover this in a later slide. Language barriers have been mentioned by nearly all people I interviewed. It is probably the biggest barrier in Asian people, uh, for Asian people. Language can also be a challenge for other non-Asian countries whose English is not their uh, first language. Most people say reading and writing is fine, but it's still a barrier, especially when you're busy, as it takes extra time. The real challenge here is a real-time conversation in English. When the spoken language is heavily accented with background noise or poor audio quality or more than one person speaking at a time, while the lis uh, listener is translating in their mind, then the speaker has usually moved on. The right diagram shows um, that in Japan, 98% of residents are Japanese, so uh, we rarely need to speak English day to day. So, you know, after conversation, we get really, really exhausted. So how about the other countries? India is known as the second largest English-speaking country, 
the business language is English. However, this is not true for all Asian countries. A colleague told me that they had a very few participants in their community meeting from uh, other Asian countries outside of India. They said they are okay with written communication, but aren't comfortable with speaking in English in the meeting. In China, less than 3% of residents speak English. A community-based, <coughs> sorry, community board member working at a global company in China commented, many documents and communications are in Chinese only in China, especially if the products are developed for the local market only. This may not be the case for the project led by global companies, but it cannot be ignored as a factor. There are some other Asian countries which speak good English, but there also seems to be other factors behind language related to this, with the confidence, shyness, or fear of confrontation. So it is a complex mix that cannot be easily resolved with technology and translation tools alone. The effect of company culture, this depends on the companies in the industries, the size and or uh, national culture. The companies that appreciate the values of open source as a part of their business strategy have a strong open source culture. Many of them tend to con uh, contribute with support and encouragement from their organizations. However, this is not the case for all. Employer support is important. In general, it is hard for many employees to allocate sufficient time and energy to contribute to open source outside of working hours. I heard that India, with exception of tech giants, it is rare to find companies who are willing to support their employees to work on open source contribution in their, comp in their company time. This is similar situation to Japan. Despite having many leading companies that develop automotive, semiconductor, cyber security, and generative AI technology, many Japanese companies don't appreciate their employees spending too much time to contribute to an external community. And they are more concerned about the security risks of sharing pro uh, proprietary IP. There's another aspect in Japan. Although changing jobs is becoming more common recently, especially for amongst young people, lifetime employment remains the most common pattern. So many people may not find it sufficiently valuable to build their reputation in officers. Gender equity. Based on the number of studies, the majority of people in open source are thought to be male. Gender bias is also one of the biggest factors that impacts the open source environment. Unfortunately, it is well known that Asian countries rank lower than the West for gender equity. At the start of my career, extreme, gen extreme gender bias was common throughout the workplace. For example, my first company in Japan had a custom called T-Duty, where on the monthly rotation, female employees have to arrive early in the morning to make the tea for their managers. It is hard to believe today, but we didn't question at that time. Um, I also heard an interesting story from a female PhD student in China who actually participated in open source community. When they, uh, when they select future careers, Girls are always told that being a software engineer is very tiring and stressful and require the logical thinking skills that women lack. She also said that the social, still ex uh, social society still expects women to take more responsibilities with the family, childcare especially, that will impact their time availability. And this seems to be the case for many other Asian countries. Social environment and culture are also important factors. I think char characteristic tendency at the national level is one of the key factors in open source community as its culture is unique. Here, I am not trying to stereotype. We all have a different personalities, but we are in, uh, influenced by the cultural behaviors of our nations as a collective. 
It is often said that people in Eastern Asian countries are hardworking, shy, feel uncomfortable with conflict. And this is not always the case for those who were born and grew up in the Western countries, <clears throat> as it is the environment that naturally forms the culture. In general, Asian people tend to prefer to maintain, to seek harmony rather than risking conflict, especially when communicating in their non-native languages. There are other social factors. Education. It is important that schools actively teach open source uh, concepts. For example, if open source participant, uh, participation is an evaluation criteria for courses or further education, most students will invest time in it. Also having a standard approach or curriculum on how to collaborate with open source in the public domain would make a difference. Political influences also um, be considered. The research shows that despite the large number of GitHub users in China, there is a hesitation to contribute to external platform and thus they use their own platform like Gitty. Half of Chinese open source developers prefer to use their local tools um, instead of GitHub. And due to performance and cost, Gitty users are actually increasing. A community member in China commented, one of the important drivers behind the impression that there aren't many voices heard from China, Chinese participants in the international communities could be their different platform usage habits and the network barriers. Although X, Stack Overflow and Slack are common across the world, many Chinese developers use their own versions. So, Final thoughts. Diversity is complex and defined by a combination of multiple factors, including geographical and social aspects. Relying on community support from a specific regions only will affect project scalability and sustainability. Open source mindset is a key. We must welcome diversity and actively embrace, embrace our differences, be open, collaborate with empathy, respect, be curious, and cha uh, change has to happen both in Asia and outside of Asia. We all need to make additional efforts. We need to be role models for open source culture at, and to lead others. Don't be scared. Find positives rather than negatives. Appreciate the differences. For real global open source participation, we need to develop inclusive open source cultures so that all communities can benefit. Okay, thank you for your attention. Um, I think we don't have time for question. So, yeah, yeah. If any questions, or I can take it offline, if not. Okay, thank you very much.